a deaf little bush kid. At around 10 years of age, I developed ear problems, mastitis, a bacterial infection eating away the bony structure in each ear. My ears were often discharging pus, blocked with gunk and very smelly. I was living in an isolated country community surrounded by hundreds of acres of virgin bush, my playground on the amateur country. I loved exploring and the pounding in my ears I just thought was the sound of the bush. Medical treatment was limited and the country doctor said I might well grow out of this. Remove his tonsils, that might work. It didn't. On reflection, we all had a poor diet, limited fresh fruit and vegetables. We all had school sores, boils and decaying teeth. The, school, the local school population was 17 in total, ranging from 5 to 14 years of age. Half of them were my siblings and cousins. My hearing and anyone else's troubles were accommodated by the one teacher and my school friend, so life was good. At 12 years of age, I was off to high school, living away from home in the city with relatives. What a shock. 40 kids to a class, over 2,000 students, and a heck of a lot more than one teacher that knew all of us like a family. The first thing, line up and answer your name. Well, now I had no cousin to nudge me and say, hey, they're calling your name. I was undeveloped, looking a couple of years younger than my age, probably partly due to my poor health. Pretty soon I was termed the deaf little bush kid. I felt isolated and withdrew to the corners, avoiding being out front and throwing up a facade of who really cares? My marks plummeted and the teacher suggested I was a lost cause. But no one ever asked me, can you hear, son? I was too embarrassed to say, I don't understand because I can't hear. My three years at secondary school were by and large a waste and I left to start work at a menial level. You'll be lucky to get a job as a garbo, was the teacher's send off. However, from every negative can be a positive and you learn survival techniques. I learned a form of lip reading and identifying the visible cues. The first thing when to say yes or no and closely watch for the reaction. This made me a good listener. Later with maturity, I was able to ask, can you speak up or explain? I'm partially deaf, so I misunderstand some things. I was going nowhere in the public health system because my family could not afford the 800 pounds for the surgery I I needed. I was lucky, a neighbour introduced me to a wonderful doctor who said I could become brain damaged if the infection was left untreated. He saw that my health was worth more than money and struck a deal so my widowed mother could pay what she could afford. So finally at 16 years of age this doctor fixed my problems. But by then the bone structure in my ear Ears were so damaged that the resulting deafness was roughly 50% in each ear. I started work as a store boy, then became a gas fitter. And after a decade or so of these sorts of jobs, I settled down to married life, a mortgage and planning a family. It was time to find a more and better secure paying occupation. A good friend who was a firefighter suggested I apply for the next intake. However, would have passed the medical. My doctor said he would back me, but thought it unlikely I would meet the hearing standard. Well, at 27 years of age, I was recruited for the next training school. Then, at the last minute, the course was delayed. Life can be quirky, and after 18 months on the waiting list, thinking being a firefighter might never happen for me, I received an urgent urgent call from the HR department. A place was available in the training school starting next week. The main intake group had already had a more comprehensive medical and fitness test. However, to rush it through, I was to be seen by the brigade doctor. When it came to the hearing test, here we go. From behind me, the doctor placed his cupped hand on each ear and asked if I could hear a ticking watch. I said yes to both ears, a pass, my lucky day. I would guessed right. However, I never ever heard a ticking watch. I went on to have a successful 29-year career in a WA fire service and retired as an assistant chief officer. The irony is, the chap who provided a vacancy for me failed his medical for not meeting the minimum hearing standard. Last year at age 75, I got my first pair 
of hearing aids. As it's without the bones in my ears, the technology took a long while to catch up. But I'm content with the sound world I know, and apart from a few situations, I don't wear them much. How strange to have an old man's hearing for 60 years, and now I see many of my old friends becoming much deafer than I am today.